I recently purchased an Apple Macintosh Performa 6200 CD computer. My family had one of these computers back in the day. I remember playing a lot of games on it, so I was curious to go back and try some classic Mac gaming on it today. In this video, I'll take you from when I got the computer and show you all the stuff I did to make it a usable retro computer for gaming. This includes both hardware upgrades as well as the software configurations that I used. Full disclosure, this Mac is known as the worst Mac hardware ever by lowendmac.com. But if you ask me, I'd say yes, it's a little underpowered and it did have some issues when it was released. But overall, I think this computer is just fine. It was meant for families and schools, not astrophysicists. Really, the only reason I want it is for the games. Early to mid 90s shareware to be specific. 2D stuff should work just fine on here. The 3D stuff is what this computer struggles with. And I'm hoping we'll be able to improve that today. At least a little. We may never be able to do advanced calculations on here. Or send rovers to Mars. But hey, we can play Boom! So back in about 1996 or so, my family bought a Macintosh Performa 6220 CD. It was a fantastic family computer. We did homework on it, listened to music on it, watched TV on it, and best of all, we played games on it. It was eventually a hand-me-down and it became my own computer. My first one suitable for getting on the internet. This was my GeoCities website editing computer. It's been a really long time since I've owned one of these. I recently bought this one off eBay for around a hundred bucks. I don't usually ever pay this much for a retro computer, but you don't see many of these performers out in the wild today, and I really wanted one. I think people put more focus on the higher end Power Max to save and preserve, whereas these performers, not so much. It's totally understandable though. A lot of people didn't like these performers because apparently they came with a bottleneck from the factory. It's my understanding that the PowerPC CPU could not run at its full potential due to the logic board not being designed for it. It's much more technical than this, but if you want to know more, I'll link to a write-up about it in the description. It's thought that Apple used many of the same motherboard parts on both the Quadra 630 and the Performa 6200 series to cut costs. Problem being, the Quadra was a much slower 68040 machine, and the Performa had a much faster PowerPC 603 processor. The computer cases look exactly the same, and these computers were being manufactured at the same time as well, so it's probably true. Don't let that scare you off though. This was still a very good computer for who it was designed for. Families and schools and grows. Most performas you'll run across these days are pretty beat up. The one I've got here looks like it was mostly taken care of. It's got some imperfections, definitely, but this computer is completely manageable and it's been tested working. What I want to do with this computer is to completely optimize it for gaming. I want to max out the RAM, install a CF card as a solid state hard drive. Then I want to pop in an AV personality card so it's just like the computer I had growing up. And finally, I want to optimize its system software for maximum speed. This is going to kick ass. Nah, give me computer. Give me computer. Ooh. So after unboxing, it seemed to be in pretty good shape. There were some cracks here and there, and unfortunately, it's missing the back panel of the computer. Which sucks, but I'll probably survive. It's really cool to have this in my collection. It's actually a lot smaller of a computer than I remembered it. Or maybe I've gotten bigger. Anyways, it's a nice little desktop to have on hand. It's actually got plenty of I.O. on the back as well. Of course, you've got your ADB and serial ports. You've also got a SCSI port, audio in and out, and this one has an Ethernet upgrade. Pretty cool. Hmm. 
Is it weird that I kind of like that sound? So once we get to the desktop, the first thing I want to do is see what OS is on here and how much RAM we're working with here. We can also take a peek at the Apple System Profiler. You can see this computer is running the PowerPC 603 processor. Some of these logic boards on this model of Mac had a serious flaw, which caused bad system instability. Now I checked my board and thankfully it was not affected. You can call me Snoop Gruz, cause I always love to snoop around these old hard drives. People don't erase them. Probably just pack the old machine away when they upgrade and then finally ditch it years later with all their files on it. The goal is to find software that I can archive online. I looked around this hard drive and most of the files seem to be from around 1998 or so. So that's good news. There's not a whole lot of apps on here, but I did find this directory that had some stuff of interest. Don't you worry, I backed it up to a zip disk to get it off of here. But I think there's still some personal info on it, so I'll have to go through it before I upload it online. If I find anything cool, I'll throw it on my archive.org page. This computer is very sluggish, and it's slow to browse directories. The hard drive seems to be chattering away like it's being pushed to the limits. I poked around a bit, and I did find Photoshop version 5 on the hard drive, so I tried launching that. And it was pretty painful. It took over four minutes just to launch the program. If that's not enough, it took over a minute just to draw a single line. <laughs> this is unusable. I also saw there was a copy of Mac Amp on here. I haven't seen this software in a long time. This computer is powerful enough to play MP3s. Mm, barely. I remember I couldn't do anything else on the computer while it was playing one. <laughs> I used to play back my MP3s through the audio out port and record them to cassette tape so that I could listen to the songs I downloaded while I played games. Oh, how times have changed. So I wanted to see just how well games would run on this computer. I didn't do any real benchmarking today, but I'm going to try running each of these games before and after I upgrade this computer. The first game I tried to run was the Bomberman meets Doom clone, Boom. Boom ran alright. I did find the game would stutter a lot, and that kind of messed me up when I was trying to play. When I play these games nowadays, I kind of expect a smooth frame rate. I mean, I could get used to the skipping, but I don't really want to. Same goes for when I tried Glider Pro. The game played pretty well, besides the random skipping. I'm pretty sure this is being caused by virtual memory being enabled, where the computer will use the hard drive as additional RAM, and that's very slow and not ideal for games. We'll make sure to disable virtual memory later. Next, I wanted to try out some 3D games, and I started that with what is probably the most optimized first-person shooter for Mac, Marathon. The load times here were not bad at all. There was some skipping and dropped frames, but overall I think this was completely playable. I tried the game in full screen mode, and it was a lot slower, but I still think that if you were desperate enough, you could still get away with playing through the game like this. I'm excited to see if our upgrades will help this game run any better. Next, I tried out a little game called Zone Warrior. The goal of this game is to fly your ship around and protect the space station by shooting down asteroids and enemy ships that are coming towards it. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, I think this is definitely playable like this. It's got some minor hiccups, but it seems to be completely playable. Next, let's check out the Mac ports of the id Software Classics. Wolfenstein is what I tried first. I have vivid memories of playing the heck out of this game on the family computer. 
This game would run like crap. It was really only playable if I ran it in a window the size of a postage stamp. I can't seem to find the software today, but I would use this mod called Wolfenzoom that would skip drawing every other line of the game. It made it so that you could get a much bigger picture with a better frame rate, but the image would look really dark. Look at this, man. Ugh. If you increase the size of the window, it quickly becomes unplayable. Hopefully this frame rate will improve when we upgrade this computer. The last 3D game I want to run right now is Doom 2. Wow. This is... Wow. This game runs so bad. I remember this as well. It's one of the reasons I upgraded to my next computer, a Power Mac 6500. I remember complaining to a buddy about how bad Doom ran on my computer. He was a PC guy, and he told me that if my computer couldn't even run Doom, then it was definitely time for an upgrade. Not bad advice, but I think this is just a poor port of Doom. There's no way this is the best they could have done. It's not optimized, and you need a fairly powerful Mac to run this. It's unreasonable. If a game like Marathon can run the way it does, Doom should run fine as well. This is a slideshow. Okay, I've had enough of this. It's time to see if we can do something about this. But before I go any further, I want to wipe this computer down just a bit. It looks like the seller had already cleaned this, but it does really need to be detailed. Like there are so many little things I could do to this computer. I could make an entire video just cleaning it. I'm going to skip this for now. We're going to be concentrating on getting the best gaming performance from this machine. I'm not going to worry so much if there's a little dirt in the headphone port. Okay, maybe I will. Let's start by replacing the hard drive with something a little more modern, a little more solid state. To get to the hard drive, we have to remove the front faceplate of the computer. Now this part is actually terrifying, because to remove this, we need to bend plastic clips that are now over 25 years old. There is a huge chance that something can go terribly wrong at this stage, and you'll find yourself trying to glue together broken pieces of brittle plastic at 3 a.m. Just be really careful. You need to insert something long and hard into the holes. And gently but firmly push up on the clip and pull the faceplate towards you. I used a flathead screwdriver to do this, but then I noticed I was digging into the plastic a little bit. So be careful. Maybe put a cloth or a rag over the blade of the screwdriver. Once you get the clips disengaged, you want to rock the faceplate upwards to remove it. There are three more clips, or nubs, on the inside top of the faceplate that will break off if you just try to rip it off. These clips are poorly designed and will break easily because they're not reinforced. And they're very old. Now all that's left is to take off this metal plate sealing off the drive bay. Inside is a one gigabyte quantum drive with a very damaged sled. Hmm, I won't be reusing this. This is such an old hard drive, it's nuts that these are still working. It's loud and slow though, so it's gotta go. I fished out all the little broken plastic pieces and yeah, it's destroyed. Pretty messed up, but ah well. Lucky for us, Apple decided to go with an IDE interface for this model of Mac, which will make replacing the hard drive cheap and easy, just like your mom. We're going to be using one of these IDE to compact flash adapters. For this Mac, you don't need anything fancy. The cheap adapters without much circuitry work just fine. You also need a power cable for it. Just a standard Molex type to four pin floppy cable works fine. I'm going to use a 4 gigabyte compact flash card for a hard drive. You could potentially go bigger, but this is four times the size of the original hard drive and games weren't really all that big back then. So personally, I think this is a good size for this computer. So the way I'm going to do this is by putting the card inside the computer first, then plugging everything into it. The adapter and card are very light 
and the cables hold it in the computer in such a way that it's very secure and it's kind of suspended in the air so I don't think anything is going to short out. So now I'm going to put this bracket back on. Then reattach the faceplate here. This part is just as difficult as taking it off. Maybe even more so. You gotta be careful with those clips on the top and on the bottom. I had to use a screwdriver again to secure the bottom clips and it took me a little longer to get it back on than it did taking it off. You just gotta go really slow with this. I cut out most of it but I was fooling around with this for a few minutes. Oh I'm so stressed doing this because it's so easy to destroy it. There we go thank goodness. Next let's see what we can do to the logic board. The logic board on this style of Mac is really cool. You just have to undo a couple of screws and it has this handle you can grab and pull it out of the computer. The board itself is so small and compact with an interesting slot loading design. It's really cool. The first thing I want to do to the logic board is to get the old battery out of it. This battery does look to be of very high quality. Unfortunately, it's dead as can be so we gotta pull it out of there. It's secured to the board with the world's strongest velcro. Look how chunky that is. I don't have another battery on hand so I'm just gonna leave it out for now. The computer won't save the time and date or anything like that until I do get another one in here so I'm probably gonna want to get that changed out pretty soon. Now next I want to max out the RAM in this system. This computer only had 8 megabytes of RAM. How many megs of RAM Carmine? 8. <laughs> I, I knew you were a power user. <laughs> Which is probably why whoever had this before me was using that slow virtual memory. We're going to take this up to 64 megabytes which is probably more than we'll ever need for our games. But it's always good to have as much RAM as you can get when you're dealing with old systems like this. Especially since it's not very expensive. I spent about 20 bucks on these sims and it makes all the difference. They're held in by clips on the sides and are inserted at an angle. Make sure you got them in the right way then just push them over into place. Next I'm going to install my old AV card from my long gone Power Mac 6500. By installing this thing It'll bring this 6200 up to par with the 6220 that I grew up with. My 6220 did have the analog TV tuner card as well as the AV card. But the TV card is pretty much useless these days. So I'm not really missing out on anything. It goes through a metal cutout in the back of the board. And slips into the slot. It's a perfect fit. Ooh. And that's all there is to it. We've now got an upgraded board. To put this back in the computer we gotta make sure we get the board in between the rails so that it's guided right back into place. Give it a little push at the end to get it snug into the connector. I love it. Now that we're done with the hardware it's time to tweak the software. Before we do anything on this new compact flash hard drive we need to format the card to the Mac OS standard file system. Apple used to block you from using their tool to format a non-Apple approved hard drive. So in order to format this drive we'd either need to use a hacked version of the disk tools software. Or what we're going to do here is use the disk tools from Mac OS 8.1. It was only when Apple updated to the HFS plus or Mac OS extended file system that they changed the tool to let it work with any drive. Also a good idea now that we're here at the desktop is to check and make sure the RAM we installed is being recognized. Here it looks like it is. Nice. So now that the drive is formatted we're going to start by taking a look at a factory fresh installation of the Performa 6200 Restore CD. This part's just for fun. We're going to end up just installing system 7.6.1 anyways but I wanted to show you guys what it looked like when you had a factory fresh Performa with all of the pre-installed software from Apple. This is what it would look like if you bought it new. When you boot up the computer it'll launch right into a welcome to Performa program. Welcome to Macintosh Performa.
To get started, choose one of the options described on the screen. The purpose of this program is to teach you a bit how to use the computer. There was also a tour for the short-lived Apple online service, eWorld. I never did eWorld back then. We did AOL for a while, then switched over to normal dial-up. eWorld looks like it was fun, though. It had a shareware downloads area, as well as chat rooms, kind of like AOL. The Restore CD also put some game demos on here as well, namely Power Pete. You guys remember this game? It's a shooter that's like console level quality. It's awesome. You blast all the enemies, collect power-ups, get through the levels, and save the animals. It was also later known as Mighty Mike and eventually released for free. That's cool because that'll run on here. And that's pretty much everything that's of interest to me. One thing I want to do now that we're at the desktop is to test the AV card we installed earlier. I'm going to pull up Apple Video Player to do this. It was really cool to be able to have video inputs like this on your computer back then. I would watch a lot of TV on this. And it was mind-blowing that you could take screen grabs and record videos back then. I had my N64 hooked up to this for a bit back in the day. Here I've got a PS2 hooked up to it. But the quality is kind of reduced here. I wouldn't want to play games like this today. Watching TV is still great on here though. This was the days before DVD players in your computer. So you'd hook up your VHS to this and watch some tapes. It's perfectly fine for watching stuff, even today. Okay, that's been fun. But now I want to upgrade the OS to the version that we're going to keep it at. System 7.6.1. The higher you go with the version of system software, the slower this computer will run. By updating and keeping this computer on system 7.6.1, we will have the maximum compatibility with the least amount of used resources and the most speed possible. So here I customized my install, being very careful to not install stuff that is going to needlessly sit on my hard drive or take up our precious system resources. And then the installer just dumped everything it felt like on my hard drive anyways. <laughs> you bastard. Installation took about 20 minutes for the initial 7.6 install. Then the 7.6.1 install took over automatically, and that only took a few minutes. Now that we have 7.6.1 installed, the first thing I want to do here is turn off virtual memory. There's really no need for it since we maxed out the RAM, and like I said, it does slow down the system significantly, especially with games. Next, I'm going to make sure I run the system using 640x480 resolution. It's kind of chunky, but this Mac will support thousands of colors at 640x480, and only 256 colors at 800x600. It's really a personal preference, and I don't mind the lower resolution. And I like colors. The next thing I want to do is to bust into the new system folder and disable a bunch of stuff we'll never use or stuff that I accidentally installed during the OS installation. I'm going to disable stuff like printers using the extensions manager. Next, I'm going to organize the hard drive a little bit here. All of these installers that we ran left a bunch of junk all over the drive. Since we've only got 4 gigabytes to work with here, I'm going to remove everything off of here that I don't think I'll use. I'll also use this opportunity to move some folders around and create some of my own for the stuff that I'm going to put on here. The aftermarket Ethernet card installed in this computer was made by Farallon, so we're going to need a special driver. I found the disk image for this card online, so thank you to whoever ripped this. It was pretty much hassle-free to install the driver and configure the IP settings. Macs were always really easy to set up in this regard. I fired up good old Netscape Navigator to try it out. And yep, looks like this is working just fine. Tried out some Macintosh.Garden. I might want to bump up the screen resolution if I plan on doing any serious web browsing on this, but it's good to know that the card is functional. 
Surprisingly, the computer even has enough power to stream internet radio. I tried out Sound Jam and it was working great. I didn't know you could stream internet radio on Mac OS 7.6, but here we are. Next, I'm going to try something a little different than I normally do. I was recently checking out the System7Today.com website, and on there, they recommend running the Speed Doubler software by Connectix. I had never heard of doing this before, but apparently the 68K emulation provided by Speed Doubler is faster than what Apple was able to come up with. And since System 7.6 does have some 68K code in it, in theory it should give our system a little boost in speed. After I installed this, I made sure to update it to the latest version of Speed Doubler, 8.1.2. Unfortunately, they packed this software full of bloat. So I went through the options and disabled everything besides the 68K emulation. The last thing I want to do right now is install a bunch of games and stuff on here. I've got a ton of files I keep on zip disks that I want to bring over to this system. I've got about seven zip disks filled with some of my favorite software. <laughs> seven zip disks or one CDR. And I chose the zip disks. I'm going to go ahead and install all of these disks. Then I'll show you some of the stuff I put on here. Navigating around the hard drive, the system feels much snappier than before. This is probably due to the compact flash being a lot faster than the old mechanical hard drive. I think it's time we try testing some apps and some games. First, I want to try running Photoshop 5 again. I'm curious to know if it'll run any faster than before. And yep, it's faster. Booting only took about 35 seconds or so this time. And if you'll remember, it took over four minutes to boot before. The best thing is that now you can actually draw lines in real time. It's futuristic. <laughs> this is actually usable now. Nice. All right, this is it. It's time to test the games. I really hope all this helped and these games play better now. Again, I started with the 2D games. If you remember, the problem I was having with these games were that there was some stuttering, making them hard to play. Well, thankfully the issues appear to be gone now. Even with the background music going. I am very impressed and very excited. This means that most of the early to mid 90s shareware games will run perfectly on this computer. This is so awesome. For the 3D games, I started with Marathon again. And what do you know? The stuttering issues we had earlier are now completely gone. And it appears to run at a higher frame rate as well. Ah! Everywhere! This is amazing. Because I found this game playable even before the upgrades, and now it's just all that much better. It also runs even better in full screen now. Honestly, I've never seen this game run this well on a computer like this. This is very impressive, but Bungie did really know what they were doing with the hardware. Now let's go back to Zone Warrior again and try this game now that we've optimized everything. <laughs> it worked pretty well before, but now even just at the title screen, I can see that this is going to run perfectly. And yep. This is so smooth. Such a fun game. If you haven't tried this one, I highly recommend it. All right, let's go back to the Mac port of Wolfenstein. Before we upgraded this machine, this port ran all right in a very small window. I wonder if the upgrades help the game out. Hmm, kinda. It still sucks when playing in a large window though. Ugh, 
this is unplayable. Finally, let's take another look at the Mac port of Doom 2. If you remember, this ran like absolute crap before. It was an absolute slideshow. But let's see if the upgrades help gain any speed. A little. I mean, it's still not playable in my opinion, but it's also not a slideshow anymore. Eh, still sucks in my opinion. Hopefully one day someone will come along and do a better port to power PC. Because this shouldn't be. I guess it's fine, because I don't need to play Doom on this computer. I just don't think it should run like this. Let me know in the comments if you have any other ideas to speed up this game or this computer. Well, this has been quite the experience. Looks like these upgrades and optimizations did the trick to speed up this computer for games. There's a lot of stuff that'll run on a computer like this. If you're able to find one cheap enough, I'd say it's worth adding it to your collection. Performa's always got a bad rep back in the day for not being as powerful as the high-end Power Max. But I'll tell you, you don't always need all that power. There are a ton of early to mid-90s games that will run great on this machine. And I didn't even touch on adventure games in this video. Most of those would run great on this computer. This Mac's got some life left in it, and I'm happy to add this particular one to my collection. It's always so special when you're able to get one of the computers you grew up with. I've got a few maintenance tasks left to do with this computer, so maybe we'll see it again here on the channel sometime. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to let me know by hitting that like button, or maybe even drop me a comment on this video. I don't know, is anyone even watching this channel? Remember to hit that subscribe button if you want to see my future videos. I don't have an upload schedule for this channel, so hit that notification bell to be alerted when I do upload one. Thanks so much for watching guys, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.